Hey crochet family, it's Sarah here with Crimson and Wool and I wanted to go ahead and do a little mini introduction on our first of many crocheted princess mermaids and this is an ice princess. So um, here is a little glimpse at her and all her cuteness. Um, instead of doing a video showing you all the supplies you may need for this pattern, I'm just gonna insert a little clip after this before we start the tutorial for abbreviations and supplies you will need to make this. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We are going to start with a chain five and work one single crochet into the second chain from the hook, then work a single crochet into the next two stitches, and two single crochets into the last stitch. We are going to be working our way around onto the other side of our chain, and what I wanna do is I wanna insert my hook into only one loop so that it doesn't have such a, a gap between the two um, areas that we're working. So we're going to do one single crochet into the next three stitches, working into that back loop only, and two single crochets into the last. If you wanna work through both loops and that's confusing, please feel free and go ahead and do that, whatever is easier for you. I've just found that as I've been making more of these, it just kind of helps with the gap right there. Although in the long run, it's not even gonna be noticed because of our tail. So we should have 10 single crochets total. And we are going to start round two and place a stitch marker. So for rounds two and three, we are going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around for a total of 10 single crochets. And I will meet you back for round four. So I finished up round three, working round four, it's an increase round, one single crochet into the first stitch, and then a single crochet increase into the next. And that's the pattern repeat. And that should give you a total of 15 single crochets for round four. So rounds five through nine will be one single crochet into each stitch all the way around for a total of 15 single crochets in each round. So go ahead and work up your next five rounds and I'll meet you back when we're starting round 10. So the tail is coming along. I've worked up to round nine. So five through nine were one single crochet into each stitch. Round 10 is going to be one half double crochet into each stitch. So I'm going to work my first half double crochet and move my stitch marker up and then work one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So I did all of my half double crochets and I'm going to join with a slip stitch into that next stitch and then I'm going to cut off and pull my yarn through and then what I like to do is take my hook insert it through the the basically the hole from that half double crochet from that first stitch between the first and second stitch and pull my yarn through and then I just stuff it in and that is the tail and we are going to be doing a color change but we're going to keep our the same blue next to us because we will only be having one round for her little tummy so um, grab your yarns and I'll meet you back here all right so to do our color change I'm going to turn the tail around and I could tell that by where I joined and I'm going to join my color in the middle back. So 
Since we worked the half double crochets, there is a third loop that we are able to access because of this. So we are going to join our color through that third loop right there. So I've said this before, but I wanna explain it again just in case this is your first time watching these videos. You have your V stitch right here, which is where you would normally just join, but we're joining into this third loop back here that gets created with a half double crochet. So go ahead and join and then create a single crochet and that does not count as our first stitch. I'm going to tuck in that tail and then I'm going to work one single crochet evenly all the way around. It might get a little tricky where we joined, but just go ahead and find a loop that you could join into and then just work a single crochet into each stitch. And when we do this, this creates that little <clears throat> ridge right there. And it kind of helps have a little bit more of a separation between her fin or her tail and her tummy. So we should only have about 14 stitches that we've created. So that's one one right here, that was our chain one from when we joined. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. We are going to join a new color. So we do, we insert our hook and pull up our loop, and then we are going to join the bikini top color, which is the same color as the fin or the tail. And then I'm going to pull those out of the way and tighten them. And that created our 15th single crochet. So right here, it looks like there's a stitch, but it's not. That's when we joined. So we are going to work into the first stitch that we created for our single crochets. Rounds 11 and 12 will be one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And that's a total of 15 single crochets. Moving on to round 13. Before we finish off the last single crochet, we are going to do another color change. So at this point, you would be able to cut off this blue, but still maintain this skin color because we're gonna work that up for her neck and head. So joining as we did before with our white, we are going to finish off that last single crochet with our white. And then we are going to work our first single crochet of round 13. And now we could go ahead and remove this blue. And get that out of the way. That way we have less yarn in the way. Okay, and at this point, I like to stuff. So for round 15, we are going to do a decrease round. So we are going to insert our hook and work one single crochet into the first stitch and then decrease over the next two stitches. That is the pattern repeat, one single crochet and then a single crochet decrease. One single crochet and then you do your decrease and then you repeat that all the way around, and that should leave you with a total of 10 single crochets for this round. Round 16 will be an increase round. We are going to work two single crochets into each stitch all the way around, and that should give us a total of 20 single crochets. Round 17, will be another increase round. We are going to work one single crochet into the first stitch. 
and two single crochets into the next with our pattern repeat being one single crochet and then two single crochets into the next for the increase and that should leave you with a total of 30 single crochets total rounds 15 through 22 will be one single crochet into each stitch all the way around and that will give you a total of 30 single crochets into each stitch so go ahead and work five rounds that's five rounds total and I will meet you back here to start round 23 so I finished up to round 22 and before we continue on we're going to place our safety eyes so I have nine millimeter safety eyes here and I'm going to count up from when we started to increase at the neck head area and I'm going to count up four one two three four then I want to pay attention to where our middle line is and then I'm going to go over about two so we want four stitches in between our eyes so we're going to count one two three and four and then we're going to place it into the fifth and we want them centered we place our backings on have these backings right here and then we have our eyes placed now I'm gonna stuff the neck area a bit more before I continue on is going to be our de decrease so basically we're going to be decreasing for the rest of the head so we're going to work one single crochet into the next three stitches and then we are going to work a single crochet decrease so I work these into the front loops only and that is the pattern repeat Round 24 is going to be a decrease round. We are going to work one single crochet into the next two stitches and then a decrease. That's the pattern repeat and you should have a total of 18 single crochets for round 24. Five will be another decrease, one single crochet into the first stitch and a decrease over the next. <clears throat> Excuse me again, that is the pattern repeat, and you should have a total of 12 stitches for the end of the round. But I'm going to go ahead and step the head a bit more before we continue. Round 26 will be a decrease over all the stitches. And that should leave you with a total of six stitches, which we will close uh, so shut. Last one. Okay, so I'm gonna leave a tail, you know, just about 10, 10 inches or so. And before we sew that shut, we're gonna make sure that um, uh, we need to, if there's any more stuffing we need to put in. And I'm gonna put just a little bit more. And 
And I just kind of like to show this if you um, haven't really stuffed before, or if you're having issues with stuffing your amigurumi, and it's either understuffed or overstuffed, um, then you can kind of get a, a, a look at what it should look like. Um, there's a lot of variables when it comes to why your stuffy may be showing through. Um, it could be your crochet hook. It could be the yarn that you're using. Um, so yes, but just so you can get a look as to how I do it, hopefully that might help. <laughs> okay, I think this will be about it. And then next we will go ahead and get our tapestry needle and sew this shut. Okay, so let's go ahead and show the, sew the shut. So what I like to do is it's kind of like decreasing. So I take my needle and I'll go through the top loop of each of the remaining stitches like I'm decreasing. So I will wrap around two of them at once. So into the next and into the following like that and pull through and one more time one two and then it's like magic we will pull it tight and close it up although we are going to put hair on her <clears throat> it's not really going to show but that is how I like to do this so I will weave in my yarn a few more times and cut it off and now let's work on the arms skin tone and then our white so there will be color change so we are going to start out with six single crochets into a magic circle My son has been dying to be in one of these videos, so he wanted to say hi. So what I am doing, you can bring your hand in if you want. <coughs> That's my oldest knee in my... <laughs> I am tying um, my tail a few times, twice, so that it won't come undone. So I've worked my six single crochets into my magic circle and then we're going to move on to round two of the arm okay so continue on to round two of the arm we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch and that should give us a total of six stitches one. don't forget to place your stitch marker I'm going to flip it, make a little cup, and then we are going to do round three will be again the same thing, one single crochet into each stitch, but before we complete round three, we are going to do our color change. So on the last stitch, we will be switching to white. And we are going to replace it with the white. Ahead and pull the tail ends and then we've done our color change so um, before you cut off your white go ahead and tie a little knot to ensure that it won't come undone and then you will go ahead and get rid of your tail ends by pushing them into the hand itself because we are not going to stuff the arm we're just going to leave it as is. And then you will continue working one single crochet into each stitch for a total of six stitches for each round. And you're going to work the arm up until you've reached eight rounds total. Once you've completed all your rounds up until round eight, you're going to pinch the arm together and work a single crochet over the two stitches, um, both sides 
to close the round. And then make sure that you leave a good about 12 inches or so, so that you could sew the arm onto the body. And you will make two of these, like this. And then we will go ahead and sew them onto the body. All right, so to attach our arms, grab your tapestry needle. And then we are going to place the arm, making sure that where we did our color change, that jump is gonna be on the inside so that it doesn't show. And then I place the arm so it's center with the body. And then I go ahead and insert my needle and bring it around close to this part of the arm and pull through. And then I take my needle and, and grab this part of the arm right here. And then I pull. And then I'm gonna insert again right where I came out through before and just kind of pull that down. And that should secure that end. And what I like to do is, <coughs> excuse me, come on up and grab in the middle right there and then bring it back down so that it kind of secures it in the middle as well. And then the last part I do, making sure I always insert my hook where I pulled it out through, is I'm going to come up on the edge right here of the back part of the arm and then secure that down. And that is how I attach the arm. So you will go ahead and do that to both sides and I will meet you back so we could start the fin. Okay, so actually before we continue on with our fin, I have quite a bit of yarn left over from when I attached my arm. So what I'm going to do is instead of using a different piece of yarn to attach to do this, the snowflakes right here, I'm gonna use that. So let's go ahead and do that part right now. All right, so each doll is different whenever you create it. That's what's cute and unique about them. Um, when we're done, I might go through with maybe taking these strands and turning it into two or one and then making smaller ones through here, but we will see. So let's go ahead and continue on and we're gonna do the fin. Let's get started on the fin part of the tail. So we are going to work a chain of nine. And if you have watched my mermaid doll tutorial, then this part is the same. So you could go ahead and make that. If not, then go ahead and stick with me. Um, it might seem like a lot of steps, but in the long run, I created this portion of the pattern um, so that it was less work um, and less sewing. So we are going to do one single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then the next stitch will be a half double crochet. And then you're going to work a double crochet into the next four stitches. So one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. And then you will do um, a half double crochet and a single crochet into the last stitch. <clears throat> And before we continue to work along onto this side right here, 
we are going to do what I believe is called a peacock stitch um, or my variation of it. We are going to chain two and then we are going to do a slip stitch over this first single crochet. So I'm going into this loop right here and then the following loop right there and then I'm going to pull through to do a slip stitch and that's going to create a little tail or a tip. And then working along, working over our tail end, we are going to do a half double crochet and try to work into only one this back loop only if possible. If not, it's okay, but I would just like to do that to create less um, holes right here. And then we are going to do a double crochet into each of the next four stitches. And then a half double crochet and a single crochet into that last stitch. And we have created one side of the tail, as you could see. And so what I do next is um, I pull this just a little bit, not to where it scrunches, and then I snip that off. And then I'm going to do a slip stitch to close. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create the other side of the fin without having to do two and then join them together. So we are going to chain nine again and basically do the same thing that we did. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So work one single crochet into the second chain from the hook, then your half double crochet, then your four double crochets, then do your half double crochet and your single crochet. So instead of doing that um, variation of the peacock stitch at this end, we're gonna do it when we close off. So we're gonna go ahead and work around and do a single crochet and then our half double crochet and then our four double crochets And then go ahead and do your half double crochet and your single crochet. And then we are going to do our peacock stitch right here. And then join with a slip stitch. So what I like to do next is I take my yarn and then I'm gonna move it up towards this area. So I have uh, maneuvered my yarn to come over to this portion so that we could flip these and sew them together in the slightest bit with this yarn or with this remainder. So we're going to just join them together and do a, just like a whip stitch to join just about three stitches together. like so. And then I'm going to bring my yarn up through here. And then now we could go ahead and get our crochet hook back. And we could take this off for a second. And we are going to join and create a 
chain one and that doesn't count as a stitch. So we are just going to single crochet across to create a little area that we can sew this onto the body. So I do about four stitches like that and then we just pull it off and then that remainder is what we will be able to sew this onto the body tapestry needle again and I'm going to take my fin and put the right side against the body and then we are going to do a whip stitch over this portion right here and I just kind of go through um, twice in each stitch so it's about four stitches that we're working over and I'm doing just a whip stitch over the next four stitches. Okay, so now <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this over and we can see that the tail is connected to the fin or the fin to the tail. And um, I want to kind of join on this on each side just a little bit. Sometimes it turns out great and I don't have to and other times I just want to mess with it. So go ahead and do um, whatever you think looks best if you need to just kind of join um, a little bit more. See, and that kind of just tucks it in. And I'm going to do that on each side. And bring it through. And pull it tight. Not too tight like I did right now, <laughs> just enough. And then I'm going to just go back and forth with the remainder to ensure that none of it comes loose. And I think that should be good. And let's take a little sneak peek. All right, so there we go. So I usually like the or the fin to just kind of go off to the side like that. We are almost finished. So what we are going to do next is her hair. So for the hair, we are going to make a cap. It is going to start with six single crochets in a magic circle. Round two will be two single crochets into each stitch all the way around, and that will give us a total of 12 stitches. All right, so I finished up round two, and then I'm going to do about two knots and cut off the tail so I can have that out of the way. Round three will be one single crochet into the first stitch and two single crochets into the next. And we will repeat that all the way around and that will give us a total of 18 single crochets from round three. Round four will be one single crochet into the next two stitches. And then two single crochets into the following. And that should give you a total of 24 single crochets. All right, so round five. This will be our last increase round. We are going to work one single crochet into the next three stitches. And then you will do your increase. And that should give you a total of 30 single crochets for round five. All right, so. Round six through usually about 11 or 12 is one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. It's kind of like making a beanie, um, but I don't know which yarn you have chosen to use and um, I don't know which hook because sometimes even, like for instance, I have the clover in um, the four millimeter and I think it is a good, substantially smaller than the four millimeter in the Susan Bates. So it depends on your yarn and your hook um, as to which size um, or how long you need to go down for the rounds. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working. For instance, right now I have done a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds. 
and I have a small little cap. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's a total of usually 11 to 12 rounds. Okay, so mine actually ended up being 10 rounds total. So five rounds of increase, five rounds of single crochet, and that was for mine. Yours more than likely will be, will be different, and mine even changes from doll to doll. Sometimes I'm using the same hook, and I'm using the same yarn, and my tension is just different that day. Um, these are things that I've noticed, so each time I just go ahead and put the cap onto the doll's head, and I make sure that it is it has enough room between the eyes and the base of the cap that way when I put the hair on it won't get too close to the eyes and also that it is not going below the neck back here so now I am going to join with a slip stitch and usually what I do for my caps is I skip one and then join into the next and then I'm going to cut off a good 12 inches or more so that we have enough to sew this on and then we can remove our stitch marker at this point and then we are going to I stretch it out just a tad not too much but enough so that I can put the cap back on to the doll's head and then I am going to position it I just kind of like to make sure that my thumb or my fingers can fit nicely between the eyes and the base of the cap and then I make sure that we are good here in the back. And at this point, we are going to sew this onto the head. So this is what I do. I have put my tapestry needle on, and then I'm gonna insert my hook and make sure that I'm going through the actual head itself and then bring it up um, through the next, like I skip a few stitches and bring it up. And then I pull through and I kind of continue this the same thing I'm going to do right now it, to do the whole head. So then I will go back to that next stitch, skip a few stitches, and come up through. And then continue that all the way around. This will ensure that these stitches are not touched because that's what we're going to put the hair through. So if I were to just go through each stitch and sew it on that way, then I wouldn't have those stitches right there to attach the hair. So that is the process, or the thought process behind why I do it this way. Sometimes it's a little harder than others, but once you get the hang of it, then you'll just be, it'll be kind of like mindless. <laughs> Sometimes I leave the tail end for the actual hair itself, but more than like more than not, I usually just weave it in and then cut off. All right, so now we are going to cut our hair so that we can attach for it. this um, princess mermaid doll. We are going to be putting her hair to the side in a braid, so we need her hair length quite a bit longer than just a regular mermaid doll so i have <laughs> i have this that my daughter got for christmas and i'm going to use this to wrap my hair so um yeah i'd say it's a good almost 12 inches in length so i take it i can't really get it all in frame but i will just take and wrap and I do it for a total of at least 35 times because the amount of stitches around the cap is 30 and I just like to always have a bit more. So I'm going to go off camera and finish that and then I will come back and cut. So what I do at this point is I cut all the hair off. And then I'm going to get that out of the way. And then we have our hair right here. So now what we are going to do is attach our hair 
to our mermaid. Okay, so to start this, I actually did one and I didn't do it the way I normally do it. So I wanna redo that real quick. So you're gonna grab a piece of hair and fold it in half and get the end right here that, at, that was at the fold. You're going to insert your hook through the base, through that V-stitch, like if you were gonna work around it, and bring your yarn through. And then you're going to take one piece and pull that through and then tie a knot. And you are going to repeat that process all the way around. Okay, so this is what she looks like now with really long hair. So we are going to go ahead and style it next. And this is kind of what I do. I just kind of put my fingers through, make sure that there isn't tangles, and I start wrapping. So I'll do that all the way over to this side. Kind of hold it there. And then I do it on this side as well. Just wrap and bring it over. And then this is where it gets a little bit harder. But we are going to start a braid. So I will break it up into three equal portions. So I have one. And so it sends the hair strands are all the same length the ones from the front part are going to end up being shorter um so as we braid you might notice shorter pieces all right so we are going to braid let's see how this is going sorry it's a little harder because i'm used to just like doing this Holding it down as well. Okay, I think we'll be able to get one or two more passes. Okay, I think that's good. So there's our braid right there. And we are going to get a small strand. Okay, I'm just going to tie it off just one time not double or anything because I want to make sure that it is looking good in the front and I think that's pretty good close enough All right, so we want to go ahead and place our blush. All right, so technically you could leave her like this or we could do her crown, which I will go ahead and do as our last step. To start the crown, go ahead and chain 21. All right, so we're gonna work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and into the next. Seven stitches. All right, so work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each of the next six stitches, so seven stitches total. <clears throat> and 
Then we are going to work a half double crochet into the next two stitches and then two half double crochets into the next and then two half or two double crochets into the following and a half double crochet in the next two stitches. So that was seven single crochets, two half double crochets, and then two double crochets into the next two stitches. So that's an increase. Then your half double crochet, and then another half double crochet, and then you have your seven single crochets into the remaining stitches. What I like to do at this point is I turn my work and work a slip stitch into the same stitch I just did my single crochet and then in each stitch I loosely do a slip stitch. Okay, so I did my slip stitches across here and then we're gonna cut the yarn off. Now, you could do this a few different ways. So what I like to do is I cut two small snips right here. And then I'm going to hot glue these back right here. So what I've done is put a little bit of hot glue right there and then I take my scissors and I press down on that little tail and that brings it in and glues it down. I'm going to do that on the other side. I'm going to bring it around and press it down. And when I use like the metal from like just any scissors, it um it just cools it pretty fast. So <clears throat> So how I glue this on is I roll the hair down just a bit and then I'm going to apply the glue right across here. So I've applied my glue and then I'm going to center and then apply down. And I want to make sure that I roll the hair down because I don't want to glue down onto the hair. And then you can flip it back over and it will cover up the remainder. So that's what I do. And then you have your crown. Or you can not cut your ant tails and sew it on. But I am, I've always glued them on. I just feel more secure that way. There is room for error though. That way, if you were to have too much glue and it was to overflow, then it could get hard. Um, but that is how I do it. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope that you enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed making it. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. That way you can be notified um, anytime I come out with a new video. And please leave a comment down below and let me know what other tutorials you would like to see. Thank you so much.